have different kinds of patterns. This has a nice, steady, like stepwise pattern. Just to, to over and down, over and down, over and down. X is one, Y goes down two. X goes over one, Y goes down two. A nice, steady pattern, what we call a linear pattern. Oh, are we doing another one? We will do another one, in just a second. Oh, what's our next question? Just be with me right now, please. Concentrate on what's going on right now. Negative two comma five. 
negative 1, 3. What we're going to see is, is what it looks like on the graph to have, like, to see this pattern of x increases by 1 and y decreases by 2. Remember, previous graphs <coughs> from the previous few days have been curves, right? Yeah. Curves in. And there are patterns to these. Okay? We won't dwell on what the patterns are. Uh, but they don't have the same kind of pattern as the one we're looking at right now. A different kind of pattern. Hold on. The next point is one negative one. Uh, then we just we just kept following the pattern. We didn't really do any math. We didn't need to do any math. Two negative three. And now I run out of room. I'll try and stick everything up just a second bit. And three negatives. Four negative, or three negative five. And uh, we'll just leave it at that, I'll say. Yeah, so the, the pattern of, of drawing those of drawing those points, it starts to look like they're all in a straight line. And will the rest of the points be in a straight line? Yeah, yeah. Probably, right? Most likely. Most likely. We've, we've plotted six points, okay? Checked our math, followed the pattern, and yeah, we've got this straight line. And remember, we talked about yesterday. What we ended on yesterday was when people ask, how do I connect these points? Remember what my answer is? You, yes. you, you try, uh, you got to guess like what's between mm -hmm. the um, other points that very you already good. know. Very, very good. Yes, that's exactly it. That's what all the, of the connecting part is. It's just more points can't actually find all these points, so we just guess where all the points are going to be and just draw this shape through where all the rest of the points we guess are. Right? And so we did all that between 2 and 3. We got all these points leading from 1 up to 4 on the y direction. And we, we plotted all those points and said, hey, it looks like it's this little curvy thing. I bet that's what it is. I bet the points in between here are also kind of curved in between. These will curve in between. These will have a little curve between them. And as, as it gets steeper and steeper, it'll look more and more straight. It won't ever be exactly straight, in case you were wondering about that. It'll be a little bit curved always. It'll just keep going. This will keep going up and up and up and up. Okay, Katie? Um, on, can you go back? Mm -hmm. On earlier homework, you told us to do like, you told us to do like two um, points, and we always did zero. Another one, mm -hmm. and it would always be a straight line, mm -hmm. but that one was a curve. Right. So that's the thing. Because students get so used to graphs being straight lines, they make a false assumption that graphs are lines. Right? And that for any graph, you just need a couple of points, and then you connect it with a line, because all graphs are lines. But that's not true. Graphs are not all lines. Some graphs are curves. And to try and help you to drive home the point that a graph is just a bunch of points. I made you plot a bunch of points to help you to see that's all a graph is. So rather than thinking that a graph is some points and then the shape that connects those points, I want to get rid of that idea in your head. Okay? It might look like that's what someone is doing when they draw a graph of a line, because it's the fastest way to draw a line, and it's accurate. Correct, right? But you're thinking of it wrong. Like your paradigm is all messed up. A graph is just a bunch of points. And to help you see that, we drew these graphs that were not straight lines. They were curved things that, in order to see what the curve looked like, we were forced to keep plotting a bunch of points. Right? And to avoid having you think, okay, well, I've got some points, so I'm just going like, to connect them however like it's a coloring book. I made you do all of this between two and three, so you can see the stuff that connects the points is not just whatever you feel like or what it, whatever it seems like. It's what would the point, where would the points be? Card off. With this one, as as uh, as Aubrey said, uh, and as I as I echoed today, we in order to connect these, we would have to try and figure out or make a guess of what points, where the points would be in between these points. 
But if I were to plot all the points in between these points, where do you think the points would be in between these? Do you think they would be like going having some kind of a curve? No. <laughs> Probably not because of what? Mm -hmm. Well, because uh, look at this point. Right? And look at this point. And look at this point and this point. They're all in a straight line, so I really don't think that there, there would be some kind of a, a curve going on in between these, and they just happen to keep hitting these points that are in a straight line. Okay? It's, it, and the pattern, with the pattern of this, of this graph or, or this table, it makes sense that it would just keep going in this straight line kind of a pattern, not any kind of curve. So since we start to get the feeling that it is a straight line, or would be if we plotted all the points, we just go ahead and draw that conclusion. We draw a line that goes through all of these points. Because I don't have time to draw, to draw all of the points in this region to eventually make a line shape. I just kind of forced that line shape. It's a little bit of a cheat. Okay. This graph is actually points, but I don't have that time. So I go ahead and draw that shape. So if you're looking at an equation here with a y and an x, and you know it will be a line, okay, then you can go ahead and, as Kate said, find a couple of points and draw a line. The reason why we're going over this is because so many of us are still having trouble with that concept, even still. So um, let's pick on another one. Okay, fill in that table. Not going to be as nice as sometimes it will be. The negative one next. So three fourths times negative one minus four. Okay. Multiply fractions, multiply straight across. Three times negative one is negative three. Four times one is four. Okay. Well, I started with three fourths, now it's negative three fourths, and maybe now I think like, oh, wait, of course, because three fourths times negative one, anything times negative one is just negative of that number. Right? So, yes, well, whatever. Four we got it. Negative three fourths yeah. minus four. Force or negative three fourths and subtract four? No. 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 What do I need? Common, Common denominator. Common denominator. So, yeah, I have four holes, but I need to turn this into fourths, right? I want to change this into fourths instead, but I can't, I can't be four fourths. Right? How many fourths is it? One. Sixteen fourths. Sixteen fourths. This. We need to have four times as many pieces in every hole. Well, we have four holes, so we're going to have 16 of those fourths. Or, what's 16 divided by four? Four. Four. Well, it should be. It should be equal to four. If it weren't, then we really mess things up. We're no longer subtracting four if that number is not equal to four. So how many fourths do we have? Uh, Okay, well we have negative three fourths minus sixteen fourths. So how many fourths do we have? Negative nineteen fourths. Negative nineteen fourths. Yeah, I did it wrong. Negative nineteen fourths. Okay, if you continue to work wherever you are, if you're finished, it does not mean talk to each other. I can kind of make sure that you have it right. Except so the next example is so simple that we don't really need to write the work down, right? Because it's multiply by zero, subtract four, we get negative zero. Negative four. 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 Negative now here's something I want to, a lot of you got your answer in fourths, but let me show you this. Three times two, six, over four, minus four. Now, what do you notice about six and four? They're a fraction together. Five, 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 two. So five yeah. by two. Five by, dividing by two. So now we can work in halves rather than fourths. When we get a common denominator, it'll be three halves minus, how many halves? 
when we plugged in 2, well that made it so that the numerator and denominator had a 2 in common. So we're able to be both divided by 2, right? Okay, now let's watch what happens here. So I've got 4 in here. 3 times 4, 12. Over 4 minus 4. Now 12, you know about 12 and 4. You can divide it. Divide 12 by 4. Or both by four, get three, or three over one, but that's still three. Right. So 12 divided by four is three, and three minus four. <coughs> Everyone stop. Robert. So, with that one, can you just like. Uh, do cross multiply and then nope. cancel off the There's no cross multiplying. No cross multiplying. So, like, with the, um, it's like, because, like, 3, 4, and then 4 over 1, because you just cancel those out, and then that's, that's the same thing. Like that? It's canceling. That's like, oh. that's like cross dividing. Yeah. Yes, you can, you can cancel out the 4s before you multiply, and you then just have 3 times 1 over 1. 3 fourths times 6 over 1. Uh, so what Robert's talking about is these two guys have a what in common? Even two. number. Yeah, they're, they're both even. They're both divisible by 2. So you can divide this by 2 and get 3. Divide this by 2 and get 2. And this becomes 9 halves rather than 18 fourths. But if you had 18 fourths, 18 and 4 are divisible by 2. And you still get 9. We can't simplify it anymore, so we're going to need to turn this into halves, right? So it's going to be 9 halves minus 8, eight halves, 1 half, 1 half. Yeah. Okay, we move on to 8. I'm just going to write that over here. 3 fourths times 8 over 1 minus 4. Well, if we follow Robert's uh, advice, we can divide 8 and 4 both by what? 4. By 4, so this becomes 2, and this becomes 1. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 4 is just, what? 2. two. two. So, we notice a pattern that we've been, it's been brought to our attention before, right? Mm -hmm. What is that pattern? Oh? Uh, I don't know about that. Okay, well, that. answer my question. What is that pattern? Uh, well, a whole number. Yeah. A non-fraction oh, yeah, number. Yeah. Okay, so when you go up by four, good pattern, you get a nice whole number, a non-fraction number. Go up by another four, you get a nice non-fraction number. Right? In fact, more specifically, if you go by up three. by four, the switch does what? Three. Goes so it's up by three, up by four on the X, up by three on the Y. No coincidence there. Down there. Now it's no, getting, it up. yeah, right. So if I went up by three, right, I would get positive two. So we're going up by three, up by three. This is a pattern that when we graph it, it's called, does anybody want to take a crack at that? When I graph it and I notice this pattern of x goes up by three and y goes up by four. What's it, um, what's it called? It's, it's a you. <laughs> it's a great Yeah. So it's a straight line pretty much. So we go over three and up four. Yeah. Yeah. 
We go over, sorry, over four and up three, my mistake. Over four and up three. Over, we go four, over three. four again and up three again. Then yeah, it goes endlessly. And endlessly, yeah, right, that pattern keeps going. When is that over four, up three pattern called? The slope. The slope, yes. Yeah, yes. 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 that's what it was. Okay. I was thinking about that. You said that. Yeah. <laughs> so now, before you leave, 